Hi, today is the last day of my trip to Sardinia. Now this trip didn't get off to a good start. I turned up at Gatwick Airport, British Airways announced the flight was delayed by six hours. So instead of arriving in Sardinia at seven o'clock in the evening, I got here at one o'clock in the morning. Guess what? Car hire desk was closed. I had to book another hotel close to the airport and with a taxi journey there and back, it was about 140 pound. Get back to the car hire desk at opening time, eight o'clock, and of course they've canceled my booking. Although I did provide them with the flight number, they can see it's delayed. Had to pay about 500 pound for another car hire. Drove to the hotel that I pre-booked and of course they've canceled as well because I'm a no-show. So not the greatest start to a trip. Somewhere along the line, I smashed my watch as well and it wasn't a cheap watch and I don't know how I did it, but the glass was all smashed and the numbers have fallen off the, the face. So all week, I've only been able to tell the time by looking at the sun. So at the moment, it's just coming up to, that's about 10.37 in the morning, and I've got another hour, then I've got to head back to the airport, and hopefully I get home today. Photography-wise, it wasn't prolific, but I did put a lot of time into one species, the common quail. But let's look at some other birds I did too. For the last two springs I've been trying to film a singing greenfinch back home and I failed. So I was very happy in Sardinia that this was the first bird I managed to film. And I like it better when it came down lower with that grey out of focus mountain behind the bird rather than the sky. I got my first decent footage of a corn bunting, but look at that horrible dust spot. This is what I get with the GH6 camera. With my OM camera, dust almost never happens. But with the GH6, just like the Sony A1 I had before, dust is a major problem. I can get rid of it in post-processing, but it just takes time. It's not as quick and easy as to do a stills picture. So I find it very frustrating. Hopefully the next OM camera will give me 120 frames per second 4K with autofocus and then I can sell the G86 because OM cameras don't seem to suffer with dust. Now I'll give you a few seconds to try and work out what you're looking at here. You can see it's moving a little bit. It's a dung beetle. Now I've seen these on the television many times and I've seen them myself in Africa too. I don't think I've ever, ever filmed one in Africa. I may have taken stills pictures, but this is in Sardinia. And it's so much more interesting when you can see it for yourself rather than on the television. One of the confusing things about it is it doesn't seem to know where it's going. It's come up the bank here twice and gone back down the bank rolling this dung all the way it's been under this shrubbery here and every now and then it stops and it starts to build a tunnel underneath the dung as if it's going to make a, a hole there and, and uh, then it gives up it's as if the ground is too hard so it goes off and tries to find a softer patch so i'm filming it with the lumix gh6 I've got the Olympus or OM cameras 12 to 40 mil lens on. I haven't brought a macro lens with me. I didn't expect to use one, but this is focusing close enough. They do eat the dung and they provide it for their young as well. And apparently some species will only eat the dung of one particular animal. This was one of the occasions when it started to burrow underneath the dung. And in fact, the ground doesn't look too hard here. It looks very soft and sandy. But each time he started to do this, he gave up.
I've come up into the, the mountains a little bit and I love this habitat. These open sort of meadows with just a bit of shrubbery on them. Not full of birds, but there are some birds here. And I've come across a new species, one I haven't photographed before, Mamora's warbler. I've done Sardinian warbler and I've done Dartford warbler, which is the other ones in this habitat. But this, a new species. And it's worked very similar to how I do a Dartford warbler back home. You just watch them, you see a bird sing from the top of a bush, the chances are they'll come back to that song post and sing again. If they've sung from it once, they're going to sing again. It might be after 10 minutes, it might be after 2 hours, you don't know how long, but they have the same song post they keep returning to. So I've just stood here by this bush and waited 45 minutes, something like that, before it came and, and sang. Now, I'm always very fussy about my background, so before the bird comes in, I'm checking the background, seeing what it's like, so I'm going to be focused on this bush in the foreground, but that's what my backdrop's going to be like. I want it normally to be out of focus to a degree. I'm not quite so keen on this background because there was too many highlights. It's a bit bright. This is better. Gives you a nice smooth background. And sometimes I'm doing it against the sky. Didn't like this one too much because the sky is divided into two with a diagonal line. I didn't find that very attractive. You can see it's a very long tailed bird, just like a Dartford warbler. Another very difficult bird to photograph, Seti's warbler. I have done them before. I've filmed and taken stills pictures of them. They're a very loud bird, you know they're there but you don't often get to see them as openly as this. But this is my contender for the most difficult British bird to photograph, the common or European quail. Much more numerous in Sardinia, and with lots of tracks around these fields, there was a chance you were always got a possibility of one coming out, especially early in the morning or late in the evening. I'm using the OM-1 camera with the 150 to 400 mm lens here and one of the great advantages of that lens is the built-in 1.25 extender. I just throw a switch and that's it. I magnify the image. I successfully photographed quail on two different days and on the second day I got pictures out in the open, I got video of them, I did far better on the second day, but when I got back to the hotel room, I put my memory card into the reader of the laptop and I got an error message. It couldn't read the card. I tried another card reader, I tried my Epsom downloader, a separate device. None of them could read the card. Now I knew I'd seen the pictures on the back of the camera, so I knew the pictures were okay, so I put the card into the back of the camera and what did I get? Card error. This is not a good moment. You've just photographed what I regard as the most difficult of the British birds and you've got a card error. Since I swapped from film to digital, this is the first time that I've had a serious problem with a card where I may have lost pictures. But I was fairly confident that when I got home I would be able to recover it because I had seen the pictures there I didn't think it would be too difficult. I have a bit of software called Ease US. I have no idea how you're supposed to pronounce that. But as soon as I got home, I ran it and it recovered all of the pictures and the video very quickly, very easily. And I was very relieved. This bird coming out completely in the open, but they don't stay in the open very long. You only get a few shots. Now when the bird is in the grass like this, I do select just the single focusing point. 
because you know that it will totally confuse the bird detection if there's grasses in front of the bird, but with a single focusing point it works very well. The very recognisable call of a male quail. Wet your lips, wet your lips. Where you can find salt pans, you find birds. These are great places for wildlife photography and the Mediterranean is full of salt pans. You can't get into all of them. This is a disused salt pan and people seem to be driving around here and there's fishermen and all sorts of activities taking place. But the birds become quite used to all those people. So wonderful places for bird photography. A green shank taken from the car window using the car as a mobile hide and a very obliging bird, not bothered by me at all. And then the red shank, much earlier in the day, before the wind built up, so you get this lovely smooth water. But you've got to be there early, you've got to be there at dawn. And black wing stilts, Now I'm not a great fan of flamingos, but they are very popular with most people. I just find them a little ugly. So it's not a bird that I normally go out of my way to photograph. Now slender bill gulls, I find those far more attractive and they're very gregarious and therefore they interact a lot as well. They were not difficult to photograph by the water or floating about on the water but I wanted flight shots and I had to visit this salt pan five times before I got the opportunity to photograph them in flight. But on that last visit they gathered by the side of the road, I was able to pull up next to them, but photographing out the car window and doing flight shots is difficult. So I got out of the car but stood behind it and birds will come very close to you so long as the bulk of your body is hidden behind that car. But I'm now in the right position, the wind is blowing from the right direction and the light is catching them perfectly. This is now very easy bird flight photography. With the bird eye detection you just can't go wrong. Thanks for watching.